G'day, in this video I'm going to teach you about a fascinating uh, interaction between microbes and plants called the rhizophagy cycle. If you're interested in the study that uh, we've summarized this work from, you can find it here. Uh, it is uh, the rhizophagy cycle. But effectively this video is to summarize that research so it's easy for you to understand. Uh, we won't be using complicated, super complicated scientific words. It's all going to be uh, quite accessible. So the reason why it's very important for all of us to understand this process is that we get six main benefits from it. The first one is that we increase uh, nutrient acquisition for our plants. And we'll talk about all of this and how it works uh, later, but this is why you need to care. Nutrient acquisition, plant growth, it reduces oxidative stress for our plants. Very important uh, in uh, stressful environments, so all environments effectively. We get a disease uh, protection factor from it as well as the term uh, herbivores. Now, my understanding is that this is more in relation to uh, insects um, eating our plants, not so much grazing animals, but more so insects, as well as, uh, as, well as suppressing uh, weeds. So all of these are benefits we get from the cycle, super important to understand. And so this all starts with our classic uh, process of photosynthesis. We have photosynthesis in our plants, that's gonna be producing sugars, that's going to be pumped down into our soil as root extradates. Now we have a whole video on root extradates, you can go check that here. We won't go into it, but this is the process which feeds microbes around the, um, the root. Now on the root, the very point where this, the root's growing, so the root grows from a single point at the root tip. A component of this is the meristem cells, which are just here. So we have a cap, a root cap that doesn't quite grow. And we have a meristem cell. This uh, this part of the uh, root has a lot of cell division, so all these cells are rapidly dividing, uh, so you get this elongation of the root here. So all these cells are dividing and then elongating. At that point where the cells are rapidly dividing is where we get this process of the uh, rhizophagy cycle. It's also at this point where the plants are producing the root extradates, so they're pumping those sugars and those proteins and all these different compounds around this root zone to cultivate microbes. So the microbes come and eat those sugars, or the root extradates, um, and then it helps them to increase in population, mine the soil uh, for this process. So a plant cell on the exterior has two main uh, cells. We have the cell wall, which is um, the, the very external part of the cell. And then we also have the cell membrane. So those two layers um, are side by side. Now, it's during this process of cell division that for some unknown reason, the uh, microbes can actually enter into the cell wall. And so what this looks like if you, is you have this uh, free living um, either bacteria or fungi, they're the two typical um, microbial groups that can uh, participate in this cycle. So to our understanding, I don't think protozoa uh, participate in this. It's more so bacteria and fungi, more so yeasts. They enter into the cell wall, uh, in between the cell wall and the cell membrane. And so if you think of the cell here, you have the cell wall, these guys can enter into the cell wall or here, um, but not so much into the internal part of the uh, plant. So technically it's in the plant, but it's in between the cell wall and the cell membrane. Now it's at this point that the plant applies a uh, reactive oxygen species uh, or a superoxidant to rip off the cell wall off the microbe. And so if you think of a microbe similar to a plant, you have your cell wall and you have your cell membrane. So here in the black, we have the cell wall. Now that cell wall contains an abundance of uh, proteins, which contain nitrogen, as well as basically all other uh, minerals. So we're talking about NPK, so our large macronutrients, as well as calcium, magnesium, sulfate, all of our, mineral, all of our trace minerals. So iron, uh, manganese, boron, everything that the plant needs. The plant actually rips off those cell walls with this uh, superoxidant and then can internalize and digest the cell wall. Now, an important part of this is that the nitrogen, for example, is actually in a organic form. So it contains carbon and allows for a very energy efficient uh, creation of plant proteins from these proteins rather than going from, say, nitrate and following that uh, process along into amino acids and then proteins. The plant is actually given amino acids for a very quick transition into uh, proteins. So this form of nitrogen, much higher quality, 
uh, and a higher use efficiency than say applying urea or um, other forms of uh, nitrogen fertilizer. So it's in this process that the plant rips off the cell walls of the uh, microbe. From here, say it's in, in this zone or it's actually in that, in that tip, the plant will continue to grow uh, and then the microbe will then uh, stimulate the formation of a, uh, of a root hair. So the root hair then elongates out and then pumps out the microbe into, uh, back into the soil. Now this is really important that the uh, microbes are then released back into the soil because it completes this cycle and that's why it's called the rhizophagy cycle. And it's because the microbes start off in the soil space, go into the plant, the cell walls are ripped off, and then it's pumped back into the uh, soil, allowing the microbe to then reform its cell wall, which then allows the microbe to then re-participate into the rhizophagy cycle. So this process is suggested to be a large contributor to um, root hair elongation. To the point where when the microbes are fully released from the root hair, root hair elongation stops. And in studies where they sterilize the plant root, there's actually no root hairs on the seedling. Whereas when they inoculate it with different microbes, there were there was effectively elongation. And so this whole process is uh, suggested to at least stimulate root hair elongation and development, um, which is quite important for uh, the future water uptake of the plant as well as other nutrients. Now this process has been studied in a range of different crops including cotton and tomato as well as wheat, uh, rice and a few other weeds. There's no evidence to suggest that uh, plants don't participate or uh, any species don't participate in this. However, the overall process is likely to be hindered in our agricultural soils because of effectively the, the low health and, and the lack of microbes in our soils. And so when we think about trying to incorporate this into our production systems, we're trying to increase the microbe, microbes in our soil and their activity. And we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. But when we come back to our benefits, the nutrient uptake, uh, it's uncertain how much of the plant um, nutritional requirements are fulfilled by this process. One study found that the plants inoculated with microbes and therefore allowed to participate in this had a 30% increase in uh, nitrogen when compared to sterile plants. Um, even that study doesn't quite confirm whether or not it was the rhizophagy cycle that caused for that 30% increase or whether or not it was just the microbes present. But it is strongly suggested that uh, this has a role in nutrient uptake. The question is how much so? Uh, in a webinar, uh, Dr. James White suggested that it could potentially be 100%, but I wouldn't really be um, betting on that. I would suggest that this is a good contributor to crop production, or at least the nutritional requirements um, of crops. But more importantly, the study suggests that this system upregulates the uptake of uh, other nitrogen uh, channels. So it increases the uptake of say, uh, nitrate and ammonium, and so potentially, in addition to supplying the plant with uh, organic forms of nitrogen, it increases the nitrogen use efficiency of, say, other forms. So that's nutrients. There's a potential for it to be uh, quite significant, but that's quite unknown. Next is plant growth. So it suggested that a whole range of different uh, hormones are contributed as well as plant growth promotants. So stimulating plant growth above ground and below ground. Uh, in one study, they found that uh, plants really couldn't develop any uh, any root system or any significant root system without the use of microbes participating in this system. Next, uh, a reduction in oxidative stress, or at least an increase in the plant's ability to deal with that stress. And this is suggested because the plant has to produce a heap more antioxidants to deal with this uh, with these um, oxidative species. And for this reason, there's a lot more antioxidants in the plant helping it to manage oxidative stress. So there are things like uh, drought conditions, as well as salinity, uh, as well as pest and disease pressure. Everything really is oxidative stress, and this process helps the plant to deal with it better. Next, disease uh, protection. So there's two mechanisms of that. The first one is that it's suggested that this process actually stimulates the plant's defense systems. It's suggested to stimulate the induced systemic resistance in plants, helping it to fight off uh, disease. 
The other mechanism is that when, plant, uh, when the microbes are then uh, pumped out of the plant and back into the soil, it can then uh, have a competitive or a suppressing effect on uh, pathogens. In terms of suppressing herbivores, uh, mainly insects, suggested that the rhizophagy cycle actually fills the plants with compounds that can uh, deter uh, herbivores. And then finally, so, uh, the suppression of weeds. Now this is a little bit more complicated. It suggested that the microbes acquired by each species of plants uh, is unique to that species of plant. And so each plant will produce a different amount of uh, oxidative stress onto the microbes. And that when the wrong microbes are there, or not so much wrong microbes, but wrong microbes participating in this particular species of the rhizophagy cycle, when they're present, they can actually reduce the growth of the plant. And so therefore, when you have, say, a crop of wheat, and all the wheat is producing uh, or uh, participating in this cycle, where you have a lot more wheat-specific microbes, and so weeds uh, then uptake the wheat-specific microbes that they're unable to function as efficiently, and have a reduction in growth. So they're kind of the mechanisms. You can read more into it uh, in the paper, link below. Now, what we do uh, with our consulting is trying to stimulate or trigger this cycle more efficiently in our plants. So there's a few main uh, ways that we uh, try and trigger this. Now we take multiple steps in trying to achieve an increase in this process. The first one is maximizing photosynthesis because it's this process which increases the root extradates which feed the microbes and, and run this whole process. You can't have this process if your plants aren't photosynthesizing effectively. So to do that, we um, usually take a mineral uh, approach to it. So applying all the nutrition uh, and minerals you need for the plant to photosynthesize effectively. So that's uh, nitrogen, magnesium, manganese, iron, uh, as well as uh, phosphorus, as well as boron to actually translocate those nutrients down into the soil. So usually follow uh, applications of that is really uh, good. But also, if you think of our typical crop production, you only have effective photosynthesis for say, three to four months of the year. What if we had a cover crop in, which extended the photosynthetic ability of say our overall land for the whole year, or at least an additional you know, three, three to four months. So we recommend having a cover crop in. It stimulates the microbes in this cycle for the, for the cash crop. In addition to that, applying nutrition and microbes directly onto the seed is super beneficial. We'll have a whole video coming up soon about seed coats and what we recommend to our clients um, for seed coats. But when we add the biology straight into the seed coat, as well as the nutrition, it gives our microbes and our plants the jump start to really participate in the cycle. Finally, there's other things uh, that uh, we want to stop doing that inhibit the system. So trying to reduce our herbicide and uh, fungicide applications. Of course, if fungi are actually used in this system, we don't really want to be applying fungicide. It's just going to kill them. If we do, we want to apply, um, say, fulvic or humic acid uh, to buffer that and help our microbes and plants bounce back. So that's increasing photosynthesis across the year, as well as uh, our efficiency of photosynthesis, making sure our microbes are there. And finally, uh, we also want to make sure we have calcium required for cell division. So calcium, uh, as I said, is required for cell division. And so making sure we have sufficient amount of calcium in our soil, uh, that can either be with our liming applications or liquid inject, even though it's a bit of a pain, um, can assist in that cell division, helping this whole process uh, function. So I hope that helps your understanding with this cycle. Um, you go, I would recommend going to watch some of the webinars that um, James White has done. Go a lot more in depth. This will give you a really good overview of the actual process as well as how we can use it. If you are a farmer in Australia interested in using this system to reduce your fertilizer bill as well as increase your plant health, get in contact with us for a free consultation. Uh, we provide regenerative advice to farmers as well as product recommendations. So you go to our website, you can see there's a free 30 minute consultation there, uh, completely free. And otherwise you can sign up to our membership, uh, which gives you um, access to our um, recommendations. Thanks for watching. My name is Seal Simmons from AgriSol, which is 